Hello and welcome to Telling Tales. Uh, here we tell atmospheric stories together through the medium of tabletop role-playing games. It is Monday night, which means we will be playing uh, Vesson, Mythic Britain and Ireland. Doo -doo -doo. Um, this is uh, our third arc, I think the eighth episode. Um, and uh, we're all having lots of fun, I think. Um, so uh, before we start, uh, promo stuff uh, below the video, our links to our YouTube if you're watching on Twitch or Twitch if you're watching on YouTube, uh, our social media, our Discord, which you should join and come and chat with us and you get uh, updates and stuff um, through there. And uh, also our Patreon. So if you enjoy what we do on the channel, you can support us through that. Um, other things we do on the channel, uh, Wednesday uh, nights, we have Simba Room. Um, and starting back uh, in June, we have the final arc of the uh, Cincinnati Chronicles, um, which is the World of Darkness multi-system game that Matt has been running. Um, and uh, we also have um, a couple of different weekend one-shots uh, a month now. Uh, the next one, the June ones, I think, are yet TBC, um, but the first weekend in July, I will be running um, the Bat Out of Hell RPG that I was going to run a couple of weeks ago, which sadly we had to uh, postpone. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, getting that uh, going. Um, but yes, if you join us um, on our social media or especially our Discord, you can get that information on when those uh, things will be happening. Um, let's do recaps. It's been a couple of weeks since we played, um, so this will be handy for everyone, not just the viewers, I think. Uh, so let's bring on Steve, who plays Henry Bonneville. Hey, Steve. Hi there. So the previous session had ended with the, um, the captain of the boat that had crashed into the side of the Thames. Uh, coming to see you after having spoken to Mosling and saying, so you think it's one of those things, do you? Or something to that effect. Yes. Um, take us from there, please. So, um, yes, we, uh, there's a bit of a sort of a odd pause at the start whilst we figure out who this person is and what they're talking about. Um, but yes, we, we quickly uh, understand that he's, he's talking about this, uh, this sea serpent thing that we're, trying to track down that has previously dragged someone into the uh, into the Thames. Um, so we we start uh, start asking him some questions. It turns out that it, this isn't the first person he's seen um, that uh, Captain Wilkins had previously um, actually lost uh, lost a, a whole crew and nearly drowned uh, in the process when um, not sure what the accident was, but essentially the, the, the bottom line was that he was saved, at least he thinks he was saved, um, uh, by a half-man, half-fish creature that left him to swim uh, towards a shore. And uh, he had problems then of trying to get people to believe him, so now he doesn't really um, bother. He doesn't want to be taken, uh, taken for a fall, so he tends to keep quiet, which is why he was being a little bit uh, cagey at the start. Um, so we have a chat with him. He uh, confirms most of the details that we knew about. That I think that um, we can um, that it's it's likely this creature is sort of headed into one of the um, the side uh, sewers or drains leading into the uh, the Thames. Um, he had been approached by our de dear friend, the uh, the journalist, um, but hadn't told him anything. Um, new, just uh, confirmed the details that had been in that morning's um, paper. Um, and basically, uh, we got as far as uh, he he's willing to... We, we're going to need some sort of crew and a captain and a, and a ship or a boat to try to track this thing down, and he is willing to help us in that regard, and he can get access to uh, a boat and uh, possibly a crew, I believe. Um, I think that was all the... Relevant details? Uh, yes, yeah, that was uh, the, the, that was the relevant yeah. info, I think. Cool. Um, yeah, thanks, Steve. Uh, so let's bring on Sam, who plays Hux, Magnus Huxley. Hello. Hey, Sam. Uh, following this, um, 
you as a as a player were sadly not with us last session, but Hooks was here anyway and in fine fettle. Um, and uh, Hooks and um, Constance uh, went with Gladys to the hospital. Yeah, so um, I think this is a bit of a the part of the Gladys rehabilitation program that we've been kind of initiating. Um, so uh, Gladys went uh, came with us to the hospital to see some needy children, and we kind of spent a bit of time cheering them up, having quite a lovely time with them. I think I think Hux was probably in the background for some of those scenes, quite enjoying himself. Um, and uh, Gladys had a lovely time with the kids as well. And Constance was kind of just keeping a watchful eye and helping out. I believe Gladys made lots of very ambitious promises of vast quantities of knitted product, which is probably going to prove challenging. Um, the only strange thing that happened was um, Sister Constance kind of just had an inkling that one of the children had mysteriously vanished at some point from, you know, I can't remember the number, but there were seven children and now there's six children sort of thing. And she didn't see them go. She doesn't know exactly who they were, but she has kind of a feeling that one of them disappeared. And she asked kind of the duty nurse and all that sort of thing. Didn't really get a solid answer, but um, she doesn't think it was Gladys. At least it doesn't seem like Gladys could have done it given, you know, time passing and she was there keeping an eye on it the whole time. But kind of odd either way, really. Um, but yeah, that was about it. Then I think we kind of just head back. Not really much else there. Cool, thank you. Uh, let's bring on Justin, who plays Gail. Um, hey, Justin. Gail went to the sort of public records library. Oh, you've not got a sound. How about now? <laughs> Gail needed to find something about, you know, what was going on with these tunnels. Can we get any maps of them? Can we get any understanding of uh, what's going on below London? So uh, went to the records went to the library went to things like that and did some research and found um some useful information that will be of advantage later uh, in the story uh to do with the tunnels yes That's, that was that was really basically it <laughs> yeah um uh you also attempted to look up some stuff about mermaids without knowing it was mermaids based on yeah. what the said um, I, I don't think i was successful or not very no, successful. no, and you try like stuff to do with the Odyssey and things like that. Gail was looking yeah. at as well. Um, cool, and then uh, that segues nicely. Let's bring John on, who plays B. Um, the two of you went to the home of Rachel Brown, which uh, B and Henry had found uh, previously. Yeah, um, B had sort of spent a bit of the morning staking it out seeing if she could pick up anything from uh, Rachel Brown's living habits. Uh, found the house completely empty. Um, and like maybe maybe the thought of breaking in crossed her mind. But she was like, no, everyone would be very disappointed in me if I do that. And then Mosling rocked up and saw that the house was empty and went, let's break in. Um, so, uh, so, so we did, uh, we found a back door that was like slightly underground and unlocked, but stuck and Mosling managed to force it open. And then B went further in while Mosling kept watch. Um, uh, we found no like sacrificial altars covered in blood or, or any, ostensibly occult things um but in looking in her bedroom b did find a letter from the bank saying that miss brown had come into rather good fortunes recently and uh photographs one of rachel brown and gladys and Dated six months before that, one of Rachel Brown and another woman. So, presumably, number one, number two, and number three. And B left the letter, but took the photographs. Which worked well, as you had pushed the role, and I, I had said that you could either take a, um, like a condition, or that there would be proof that you had or, or that somebody had been there. 
Um, so that works really well narratively there. Um, but yes, you escaped without uh, without her coming back and finding you in situ. So that was positive. Um, so finally, let's bring on Inga, who plays Constance. Hi, hey, Inga. Um, um, yes, yeah. everyone returns. Yeah, so uh, Const well, Constance swung by the butchers. So we've got a nice fresh, freshly butchered pig um, back at Rose House as well, ready for any sea serpent stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, we all can be reconvened together and uh, be kind of shared with everybody else, you know, what she'd found. Um, and uh, yeah, mystery woman to everybody except for Constance, who did recognize her. And you left us on this awful cliffhanger as uh, Constance realizes the other woman photos somebody from her church. Dun, dun, dun. And then it's been three weeks. <laughs> and it's, it's been cruel. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, you recognize this woman as um, Sister Josephine Swan. Um, you are. No, no, no. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, I know her. Huh. What's the chances of um, that? I. Well, no, I. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. No, I don't, I don't think this is happenstance at all. Um, it's this um, Sister Josephine from. From um, uh, from from my church. Um, the uh, how does she know Rachel? Um, uh, is this? Uh, I don't know. Is this maybe an awkward thing to say? But uh, are there other folks who you know can see or know of this sort of thing at your church? Is that a thing or? You just you didn't didn't know about it before. It seems kind of strange that both you and her have come from there. I was just thinking. Well, was she there before or after the photo? I point to the um, date in the corner. Uh, Johnny, longer th than that. Uh, yes, it would have been before the photo. Yeah. 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 No, no, I've known her for longer. Um she's no, she's been she's been around for much longer than that. Um uh, So does does this mean you knew her potentially when she had that thing? Well, we don't know that she ever had that thing. That well, I mean, perhaps you're she's right. perhaps she's been investigating something. It, I I mean I it's not something I was aware of that the church I mean you're right. I, I'm jumping I to conclusions. To... If she did, though, that would that time have matched up? Well, no, it, it just can't. It, it can't. She can't have done. She can't have done. Um, we know that the that being a person of faith and that 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 it destroys it. And she can't. She can't have done. No, she can't. She can't have done. Johnny, can I? Can, well, I guess Inga. Can I ask? Is this <laughs> Constance meaning can't have done or trying to mean can't have done, but in your mind actually worried that could have. <laughs> You might not have um, a, a clear answer with that. To I, I, I think like on a conscious level, can't mm. have done. Okay. Subconsciously, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> this, this it was fresh info. I haven't been to it's not like yet. <laughs> it's not like consciously know that this sister actually turned evil and was trying to do terrible things and lock, got locked up. That, that's what I was checking for. <laughs> cool. No. Um, I know. I am um, the. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I, you know, I came to the church, like to my faith, really entirely because of an encounter with Grayson. But I, I wasn't aware that this was something that was particularly common. Um, I, I, I it's, it, it's, it's not like with a Vesson Salvation Church or something, you know. It's, um, but no, I wasn't really. Um, I had actually written to the priest there recently um, 
well, actually, because I was, uh, you know, yeah, you as well. You know, this is this is. I, I really think we're, this is this feels purposeful. You know, meeting with all of you and and encountering all these faces. And it's not. I don't see it as coincidence, and I think it's no accident that 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 I that I came to I came to be where I was. Um, I, I suppose I didn't think it was all that unusual that at the time that a priest would have had knowledge of, you know, ways of banishing evil creatures and and things. But obviously, it's not been as, you know, we've had, certainly haven't encountered anybody else. Uh, perhaps there is more of a connection uh, that, than. But, but I mean, the, the place saved me. That the, the, she, she, the, I mean, I don't think she could have possibly had the, this thing. Yeah. You, maybe, you, maybe she was also investigating did you get a reply when you wrote to them recently about it yes um i yes i was um well i was going to plan a trip um uh, perhaps to take gladys as well um but no mention of if, this sister no 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 um it was a lot more oblique than that in in my letters um but really just to hint that there was something relating to this purpose um, that I that I hope to discuss and 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 hopefully to visit back again soon. Um, Sounds like and I'm got... welcome to back. Sounds like maybe we've all got a trip to go there then, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, well, um, well, I mean, of course, anybody's welcome. Anybody's welcome, but um, I'm not sure I how. I'm not sure how I feel about the, the idea of this little army of investigators coming in as though there's some sort of wrongdoing. Um, but well, of, course, I, of course, anybody's welcome to come and meet with people at meet and pray. And I think it's important for us to learn how uh, Sister Swan knew Rachel Brown. That is yes. That is vital. I think. Yes, but I mean, perhaps, perhaps Rachel went to the church as well, looking for answers. Maybe that's how. Maybe, maybe Rachel's not a malicious actor in this, exactly. Um, but if so, the answer she was given was to pass the spurtus on. Maybe she never got an answer. Well, maybe we, something else got in the way. Maybe she found her own well, answer we, outside we, of it. We don't know that she got that from the church. There, there was a book in there was a book in this very house that suggested murdering twelve people. I, I think exactly. passing it on seems like quite a trivial and innocent act compared to something like that. I mean, who knows what sort of information or misinformation rather there could be? I, I, I can't imagine it was anything malicious. You imagine the church did give her the answer of twenty years peasant uh, penance. She didn't like it. She decided to find her own way. Doesn't mean that's, I, that, that's also people. possible. Yes. Um, I, I have to. I'm a, I'm a little. <laughs> I'm a little shocked that I suppose it's not really worlds colliding in, in a way, but it, it also does sort of feel like that. Did you Did you know Sister Swan well? Did, uh, can you speak of her behaviour or, or interests? Or I mean, we're. A lot of people come to the church for very different reasons, and a lot of people are putting behind them a, li a previous life. Um, I, I think what's important when you come into the to something like this, especially, probably more so than if putting aside that previous life can sometimes be very important, and the the idea that if you're choosing a life of good that that's the thing that you get to know. That's the person you get to know, not who they were before. Um, so if you're asking me about her life before and any secrets she might have brought with her into the church, as far as I'm concerned, they were hers to keep and or to take penance for, if, if that's the right thing, um, in her own private way. Um, the person that I knew, I mean, I, I wouldn't have stayed at a 
I would I wouldn't have stayed anywhere if it seemed that there was something wrong happening. I mean, she was just like any any of the rest of us. She was studious and diligent and meticulous and did her duty just just like we all did. Johnny, am I correct in remembering that Gladys was at least heavily implied to be in a relationship with the briefly or like lovers with the, the woman who we went to investigate? Rachel Ra Brown. Rachel Brown, yeah. Is that is that yes. correct? So it, yeah, it certainly okay. seems to you like a romantic. Okay, yeah. so Hux will go. Well, we've got a picture of Rachel Brown and Gladys, and we've got a picture of Rachel Brown and this sister. That's not really a the sort of thing you have of a casual friend or someone who's helped you out. And uh, it looks to me more. There's like a photo of all of us up on the wall here. Well, yeah, but to have just I don't know what you're exactly casual implying, friends. Hux. Uh, yeah, exactly. No. They were pretty close, right? It's just a bit specific. It impl implies a bit of a different relationship, if you see what I mean. Not to say anything of the sister untoward or what, but it's just worth thinking about in this context, okay? And do you found this photograph with the photograph of Gladys Pugh, correct? Correct. Were there any other photographs in the same location? No. Nah. Yeah, you see what I mean? That's got to stand out, hasn't it? Yeah, yes. I mean, it's, it's obviously, there's obviously questions that need answers here. Johnny, I know this is probably to a very obscure question. How sensitive would we be about mentioning this in front of Constance, given she's a sister? And it's at least a bit sinful <laughs> to say that about another sister, presumably. <laughs> Am I backing um, off now or am I pushing further? I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Given I am religious myself. It's quite, you know, 1800s, people are still a bit... I yeah, I mean, you, you've seen... But you've seen how uh, Constance is with Gladys and as much mm. as she may be mildly judgmental about some things, she doesn't seem to have, you know, had any particular issue as far as you can see. Yeah, so, yeah. But as far as I yeah, know, I would... Would a sister being okay. like in a relationship with Rachel Brown mean she was cast out of the church, or would she be just a bit like, oh, keep that on the low, low down? Do I probably know that? depends on the church, I guess. Okay, okay, fair enough. So I think I think it's fair to say like you, like, I think Constance was definitely a bit judgy when she realized when when Gladys first mentioned being in a relationship with Rachel. Mm. Um, like I think you probably know her well enough now to know that she's <laughs> definitely a bit conservative about these sorts of social issues. Um, uh, would be the maybe slightly polite way of putting it. Um, similarly, she yeah, she had a few raised eyebrows at like Esme's like lifestyle and you know all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and I think you would probably assume that Constance, as like it may not be like you know a formal sort of vow of celibacy type of thing, but like you definitely get that Constance is more in that kind of at least for herself personally. But whether that reflects on the wider chart, she knows. But oh, okay, yeah. given given that uh, uh, impression, that I will say. So, assuming that this this sister and Rachel Brown were at least at some point lovers, maybe in from the church or maybe not, whatever, that would suggest that she would have known about this at the very least, right? She's got to be entwined in it some way, and there's got to be a lot she can tell us about Rachel and help us figure this all out. Um, yes, it, uh, the, I, I do think it's a somewhat delicate matter if, if Sister Josephine was speaking with Rachel more in an advisory view for, for, for reasons of faith, that, that that's a very private thing. If she was you know, confessing or, or asking for help from, from, from Josephine, then that, I'm not sure we've been, Pressing for answers may not be. It's 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 such a private thing um, that I think is it's that's such a private, sacred, and yeah, I, I, I wouldn't take that lightly. Asking uh, hang to on, hang on a second. press someone else into that. So, sorry, sister. Someone else has come into my head. If you've been cursed with some evil, like monster, by someone, you ain't going to keep that picture up in your room, are you? Like, if you know it's from them, that's that's like, I mean, ending a relationship, you'd think, but you're not going to be like, oh, yes, that uh, right next to someone else you were dating for a while. Unless this is someone else. I guess it's some but, sick 
connection thing. But if so, why would Rachel keep the photograph of the person she's? Has well, to yeah, but to? in that case, she doesn't feel. Maybe she feels a bit guilty about that one, but she's not, you know, angry at her. But surely she'd be angry at the first one, the one she came from. So it kind of suggests to me maybe she wasn't. I don't know. You can be angry at someone and still love them, Hux. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough. She didn't exactly have it on display. So what do we do? Well, I'd say maybe one of the questions to ask is if the sister is still a sister. I, uh, I, mean, I can write to Father Alistair again, but um, yeah, I, I, I can I can write back again and and find out. But um, yes, to my knowledge, she is she is still with the church. It has been it's been a little while since I've been back, but I I, I would have heard about no i i, I think I, I think she must still be but certainly back then johnny how, how long ago was this photo taken did you it did have a date on it correct yeah so the the one with uh rachel brown and gladys um was from shortly before you met gladys i think i said a couple of months ago um and the other one was about six months before that. And then the letter from the bank was between those two dates. We'll say three months before the... Okay, so we're only so going... Two back... months, five months, eight months. Yeah, so. yeah. we're only going back eight months. Um, okay. Well, yes, we, we need to know. We have to. We have to follow up. This is a, this is a lead. Uh, what it, wherever it takes us, we, in the best case scenario, um, Sister Swan. Well, I guess from her point of view, the best case scenario is that she she has no idea about the Spertus, and, and the photograph is entirely coincidental. Um, from our point of view, the best case is that Sister Swan knows something about the Spertus and about Rachel Brown, and can. Give us further information. Um, I think we're duty bound to uh, uh, to follow up. But uh, as to how we approach it, uh, yes, I, I some uh, I mean, some subtlety is required. Uh, yeah, I, I mean it's, it's very easy to get swept up in all of this, but we've also got this sea serpent to to deal with, and Paul Mosling's got his fairy situation as well that's still active um this is new information but it's not a new development per se it's um this is, this is old news recently discovered um i can write yeah uh, uh, I, I don't think we need to leave london all of a sudden yeah i agree uh, people people could get killed by the river again tonight you know we should probably prioritize that first equally didn't you just get a big carcass from butcher's sister i mean that's um, yes off. yes well, I mean, there's ways of keeping these things, of course, but um, yes, I'm sure Hawkins would rather we got this out of the house sooner. Or <laughs> Is it just been later. lying on the floor behind us this whole time? <laughs> it's laid no, on the table. Maybe just yeah. put away. <laughs> We're just talking <laughs> no, over it. Got, there's, there's been hung up Constance somewhere. Constance has it just like over her back into this a, whole conversation. A nice box. <laughs> Hawkins wouldn't leave it just lying about, bleeding all over the place like that. No, he wouldn't, no. Left it in the bath. Um, so, yes, um, I, I guess as long as uh, Gladys is 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 doing well, as long as um, the uh, regimen uh, that you've uh, created for her is working, then, then I suppose you're right. But if there is any sign, if there is any change in Gladys's situation, I think we must... Uh, well, change priority, priorities as uh, as necessary. Yes, of course. I think that would be true regardless of this photo, yeah. photograph. Any more uh, flown off the floor or some such. 
Mm. Yeah. So we've got a boat. What's the plan? Um, uh, well, we needed to, to we need to find this thing or find somewhere to lure it to. Um, uh, Mosling, did you find something in the? You you were looking at the. I was going to go back to the records myself, but um, here, here we are. Um, any leads there? I think so. I think that we have some places that we might be able to work. Uh, I think I've got a better understanding of the tunnels and their layout, and if we want to set a trap, that might be achievable. Maybe we can use this pig carcass to lure it somewhere and then somehow convince it to bite its own tail or um, find a way of dispatching it. Johnny, what time of day is it now? It was later in the day when we got back, was it? Yeah... Mid I think it was about noon. I think I think yeah, you said okay. it was about noon when we all started heading back. So I think it's still like early afternoonish. Yeah. So this thing's only been same one o'clock. Yeah, sure. So this thing's only been seen in the night, right? So did we want to try for tonight, or we could set up and do it on the night if we need a bit of prep time? Of course, tonight is the full moon as well, so that that's you know that won't be that won't be a problem, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure whatever's you... after you can not cross water, Steve. Look, we told you we're gonna make them fight each other. <laughs> could we? I'm Bradley. <laughs> How do we think we? In the pig, what... right? I never needed to go to the butcher. What ways are we able to? Would might we be able to trick something into biting its own tail? All I can think of is either slathering the tail in pig grease, or maybe uh using some kind of fishing line to dangle some pork meat near its own tail or you know someone leaping around near the tail these are all things that i can think of but otherwise i'm not really sure do we have any idea how long it is yeah we we know how long it, we know its dimensions we know its sizes uh something like well i, I had i had it in meters uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Six meters that long, one and a half meters wider. <laughs> and so that's our memory. I was hoping this one would help. Johnny check check the subtitles for all. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've, I've got three meters long, but I, I, I could be you're wrong. You're on mute, Johnny. Now we need to dub Johnny. Um, about seven yards if it's six meters. Mm -hmm. There you go. Depending if it's a uh, snake like, maybe you could get it to call around something. Snakes bite their own tails, don't they? I get. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's not been something that's been in my reading. I swear I've heard someone say that before. Maybe it's a saying. <laughs> I'm desperately trying not to say, well, you would know, Hugs. Wow. So, uh, well, I think slathering something in pig grease underwater is going to be tricky. I think we're reliant somewhat on the pig itself. Uh, Johnny? Um, I'm going to say that Justin is aware from his readings that the um, the sort of sluice gatey tunnels are much shallower and that actually while this thing presumably can swim in there there may be some protrusion potentially depending on where you get it in the tunnels so that would be something that you could plan for if you try to get it to a certain you know like when you've got bits that cross between two main things, Sections. that would be, sh yeah, so you could potentially um, try and do something with that so if you want lure to. Lure it past and area. then get some pork on a stick and stick it into the tail of the thing and then... I mean, have you ever played the game Snake? <laughs> <laughs> We're pre-mobile phone. I don't know what you mean. Um, no, it's where you just try and grab a snake. It's where you right. try and grab a snake. <laughs> the old-fashioned version. You, you grease very a popular. snake, and then you release it. You grease an adder, and then you release it into a basket. <laughs> right. They didn't have that so, one. Adder, no adder, adder was involved well in the making lane. of this. <laughs> this. Right, anyway. That's, that's, <laughs> that's an option. Um, 
I, I personally, I really, I really don't have a plan. I don't know, but I know that something involving this, it's got to involve this pig. We've got a lawless snake somewhere, uh, or we've got to take it on the high seas slash the Thames. Um, if we manage to bring it to somewhat shallower ground, will we be, will we be all right with the captains with a boat for the captain? Um, uh, and perhaps if perhaps it is best to cut this <laughs> to butcher this pig properly. Um, well, not properly, but you know what I mean. Um, we've got you know, we managed to trap it somewhere, throw down bits of pig to excite it and have it gnashing its teeth at things and you know if we miss the first time we yeah. cut some more other leg to throw on or whatever i wonder if there's somewhere that we could trap it and then introduce the pig and then see what i i, I don't know johnny was there anywhere in my research that it looked like you could you could trap something or there any kind of gates that could be closed anywhere it could be lured um did i say i was giving you an advantage on these things i think that was what yeah. i said wasn't it would that yeah mm. that would be so um, would be to try and f might there be an advantage to try and find somewhere like that um yeah, make me please, Justin. Uh... Oh, I don't want to commit to the plan. <laughs> oh no, it's not, it's not it's not committing to the plan. Um, basically, any any role to do with this stuff, I'm going to give you advantage on. So it's not like if you. It's just it's just one role, though, isn't it? it? For now, yeah. Um, right. So so if you can make, I guess it's a learning role for like figuring out based around Let's the thing, unless you want it. to make an argument for something else. No, I do not want to make any arguments for anything because that way madness lies. <laughs> I do need to select my dice. I've got lots of and lots you of and you there. add two dice, I think, for an advantage. Uh, yeah, That's I'm gonna right. add those two dice, and I get those two dice gave me nothing, but the other dice gave me one success. So I am. Um not unsuccessful okay um yes i will say that you definitely think that you can close off with the sort of barred gates um a, a section and create so there's no escape route essentially um i think there's an area that we can bar off and then trap it and then when it's there we can we might be able to hold it for a short time before it breaks out, depending how, on how strong it is. Um, there we could try and find a way of making it bite its own tail, or we might be able to butcher it. But I do, I do remember, I do, I'm sure what we've read somewhere, that it has kind of hypnotic powers. And I am... I think that we should act decisively with this thing and not just leave it and not trust. And we should have a plan and that plan should have a backup and the backup should involve gunpowder, lots of gunpowder. It's, it's just my personal opinion. Are you able to procure? In that case, we need to make sure that with... And, and we need to, uh, this place that you've you've spy, spotted Moslings. This a safe place to be setting off a lot of gunpowder. No, no, there's very few safe places to be setting off a lot of gunpowder. Um, but it's certainly a place to do it. That has few public. It has few people. Um, the explosion might be explainable as some kind of gas explosion in the sewers maybe the gas will explode in the sewers and it will all be a bad idea uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the right way of doing it does sound patchy a I handful agree. Of people, this, 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 and how many people you potentially well, how many acceptable casualties are there in, the, in this scenario this, um, 
Uh, right. Um, I, I, I think that's not the course of action we want to get to. We, we could. I'm sure that if we turned out the captain and his crew on this thing with hand spikes and harpoons, they'd be willing to give that a go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know a place down by the uh, the docks that sells all the whaling kit. We can go there first, see what we can find. Harpoon guns and the like. I thought you were going to say, Huck, I thought that you knew a place down by the docks that would happily sell this meat. And <laughs> well, I also know a place that, fish pies tomorrow. I also know a place that sells explosives, but I don't fancy bringing that one up so well. Well, the captain did say that he had experience in... in uh... In trapping things, so uh, perhaps he'll be able to offer offer a view on the plan and uh, uh, offer his uh, expertise. That seems like a reasonable idea. But yet, did we uh, did we think we'd? Is it worth checking the library again uh, for information on this uh, this hypnotic power? I would be happier if we had some way of avoiding defense uh, against it. Yes. Yes, I think yes, uh, I agree. Yeah. I, know, I, mean, I can go collect some books from the library right now. We can have a little look. We've got we've got time for this evening. Seems like we should all wear a cross. That always works pretty well, right? Yes. Well, I hope you're all wearing them anyway. Very good hooks. It's like rusted but I'm wearing one. It's made of hazelwood. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is an old one I've had from ages ago. Rust, rust you mean the plant disease, right? <laughs> Sam? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hazel rust. <laughs> hey, good old hazel rust. Touche. <laughs> um uh right, well I'll I'll go uh, I'll go and have a look through the books again and see if there's anything that I, about hypnotic abilities and, and things like that um we also st do stuff to deal with this fairy business as well um uh, and, unless Mosling, you think it's wiser just to stay out of the house for over the nights for a little while i it thought like had, we had, get rid of this thing has this has this thing still not been appeased goodness i don't think we have much luck Mm. Didn't get the right pathways. I need to try the little ritual again. I can tell you it's not very happy, but I don't think that means it's left. Well, they are vicious things and dangerous, so... I don't think it's very inclined to give up trying to... Um, well, whatever it wants with you. Well, that is terrifying. Um, I think that I... that... Go on. No, I, I was going to say that I think that that will have to wait. But um, if you have a suggestion, I was, I suppose, just going to suggest maybe if you spend the night, and if it turns up again, you could try talking to it in a way that isn't just shouting at it to go away. And this thing... I, I don't did, know what I would have to say to that thing. Sort of, the, this thing attacked Hux with some sort of dust or the, the visions and things. Yeah, no, it, 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 didn't it, it, wasn't, it wasn't very fun. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't feel like I was in danger, but... Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, Yeah, a room. Um... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, imagine if it got into my bedroom and then it decided to attack me in the night. I know, I know. It, uh, it got me with some powder that made me see some Just... weird visions. That you were in the visions. Uh, it was a bit unsettling. Well, I, I, it, this this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, no, I I do not intend to try to treat with this creature. Uh, I think that it'd be best to banish it, maybe to trick it or deceive it if we can do that, mm. so that we can uh, we can get rid of it. Um, I have one. We we could uh, we we could. 
Um, uh, Constance is going to conspiratorially look around, check she can't see any fairy before gathering everybody in. So, um, perhaps this is a little, well, perhaps you do, we talk, discussed very loudly how you will be braving the night here. You pad out your bed so it looks like there's somebody in there. And then when the fairy comes to attack you, it's been tricked. I like this plan a lot. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I had a trick in mind, but I didn't like I didn't want to do it. I didn't most like the sound of it, but this trick You muted, Johnny. Would be good. Inga, could you please make me a stealth roll? <laughs> I'm sure that's your top, top bat, right? Right, stealth. I have no points in stealth, but I do have four <laughs> in precision, so fingers crossed. That's the best number of dice to be rolling. <laughs> I have no successes. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Cool. Should I roll for vigilance to see if I saw it before I said that? <laughs> well, I now. like this plan, so we'll give that a go. Uh, I, I'll climb out through my window on the way out. Well, look at look at it this way. Either way, as well, it's we. You might be out tonight anyway. If we're all out hunting this damn sea monster, so uh, you might not be here either way. Well, I'll loudly say that I'm going to bed. Oh, sorry. Anyway, I, my, yep. I was I was thinking of uh, going to that whaling shop. Anyone want to come with me? B? I'll go with you. But we need to stop at the butchers on the way back. See if they have pig offal. So that will save us from mincing up what we've got. And then when we get back, I'll carve that into chunks. Slightly more usable than a full pig carcass sounds good i probably can arrange for the pig carcass to be located somewhere in the sewer kind of like near the sewer where we're gonna near where we're going probably that seemed like maybe nearby and we can kind of drop it into the sewers <laughs> near where we're making this plan the caption Maybe um, he might be able to help with that if we. Okay, yeah, I'll do that um, and see how many of his men he's willing to spare to help with this thing. But we'll need a plan for how to deal with the hypnotism. Well, I'll hit the books. Uh, as as will I. As I think. Yes. Wonderful. Right. Well, uh, I suppose I'll. If that's that's it, I'll head up to the library. Okay, so Constance and Henry are going to do some book learning. Um, B and Hooks are going shopping. And sorry, Justin, what was Gail doing? Gail's going to find the captain. Yes. Get a load of men to move the pig, of his men to move the pig carcass, and get volunteers for our daring scheme tonight of sailors who are willing to try and capture this beast slash dispatch this beast. Perfect. So let's do um, Henry and Constance first. Uh, so if you guys want to make learning rolls for me, so after and the you're last session, looking at more I... sea serpent stuff and. Uh, hypnotism. Not necessarily sea. Yeah, not necessarily sea serpent for me. I think anything hypnotism y, whether it's okay, seas related or not. Um, and yeah, I took a new talent last time, um, which was uh, bookworm. So I got a plus two for learning roles with Perfect. books in libraries. One success. I rolled eight dice and didn't get any successes. Okay. Um, okay, Inga, uh, Constance uh, manages to basically find a book on hypnotism. Um, and um, 
what you learn is that there needs to be some kind of sensory trigger. Obviously, this is related to people performing hypnotism on people and not to a vessel, but um, there always needs to be something to bring you in and sort of something to take you out again. And it, and it w will be a sensory, usually visual or auditory. Um, so, <laughs> you know, in terms of uh, yeah. avoiding being hypnotized, that's something that you might want to keep in mind. Um, Just don't look at or listen to it. That's that's the key. Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at this, Mr. Bonneville. <laughs> I don't know how we can do much about looking at the thing, but um, if we're lucky and it's something to do with there's some sort of noise that it makes, um, I suppose we could block our ears. Although I suppose it might make communicating difficult as well. Perhaps Mosling's right. We need to be very clear about our plan going in. I don't like the sounds of that. Um, I don't I like the sounds of being hypnotised either, though. Well, no, no. Uh, I suppose if that's all, all we can do, then uh, um, then that's what we'll have to plan for. Uh, I guess it's too much to hope that uh, viewing the thing through a mirror would disrupt its, uh, I don't know, some old classics reference. The only other thing I can think of is would, would uh, you you mentioned I can triggers. bless a mirror. That might be worth a worth a shot, I guess. Um, do you think it triggers for 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 leaving a, a hypnotic state would would some would would a loud noise perhaps break um, the the hypnosis if we were maybe get some small firecrackers or something to is that worth and um, perhaps. Perhaps it's, uh, it's not a bad idea. I, I, I don't know. I suppose it's not terribly clear about what the if it, how specific it needs to be, or if it's just being shocked out of it, or 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 what have you. But um, I suppose it's better than going in with nothing, having some sort of idea of what, what what might be a good idea. Well, you did better than me. I uh, I drew a complete blank. I'm afraid. Well, I think you've done a much better job of trying to understand what this could translate to. So. Um... Very good team effort there, Mr. Bonneville. All right. Mute. So many times today. <laughs> uh, let's cut to B and Hooks. Um, so where are you going first? You got two destinations, right? I guess or we're just docks, docks first, yeah. if you are up for that. For yeah, shop. that makes sense. I assume there'd probably be quite a few whaling shops in London this this period of time. We're kind of in the height of the whaling, as far as I'm aware. Um, uh, yeah, are you, uh, who's deciding on which one to go to? They they range in um, what I would call visual signifiers of reputability. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I reckon I know like a couple that are used as like gambling dens and stuff, but I don't actually know anything about the whaling merchandise. That's, that's I know the area for sailors and stuff. Uh, yeah, places that sailors frequent. Exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. But I'm probably like otherwise. So I'll just point at one of the ones I've gambled in once and just be like, that one. All right. Can't remember his name, but I've met him before. Uh, yeah, you walk in and you recognize the guy behind the counter. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of looks at you as you come in and you see the sort of moment of recognition uh, on his face. Um, and uh, he says, oh, bit, uh, bit early for you to be in here, isn't it? Usually would be, but we're uh, looking for some reputable trade today. Browsing your wares and all that. Right. Uh, I'll start just looking around. He's sort of watching you quite closely. <laughs> um, uh, need anything specific? Can I help at all? I might like look at B for a second, thinking like, you know, how much do we want to? Well, I, mean, I think like, is it, assuming the shop is big enough for me to go over to B and like speak quietly, and he can't hear. Do you reckon? Would that be all right, Johnny? 
uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can sort of cup to whisper. Um, yeah, yeah. He'll be able to hear that you're saying something. <laughs> it will you... not make us look less suspicious. Uh, no, <laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I'll say to him one sec, and then I'll go close to B and just go like, a "Small whale, we're hunting." What? I guess giving him dimensions is fine, right? Uh, can you make vigilance rolls for me? Both of us. Yeah. Five. Yeah, no successes on five dice. Man. Mm, nice. I think Johnny looked away exactly when you did that. Oh, Two sorry, successes. Sorry. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, he is watching you very closely, um, and you think that you hear maybe the sort of cocking of a pistol under the counter. Wow. Like, he, he obviously thinks that you're going to try and rob him. Right. You know. I don't notice it, so I just go, like, kind of shrug to you and then just be like, yeah, I guess, nodding about saying the size of the whale. He's got his hand under the counter. Like, you don't think that he's going to, like, but like, if he, he's basically waiting for you to try and take something and you think, well, then you don't think he's going to just attack you for no reason. <laughs> A lot of people stealing yeah. from whaling shops at this time. <laughs> what uh, what do you recommend? What's that? For a beginner. You know, <laughs> the same me and Hux are going into the whaling business. Smaller ones, maybe like seven yards long, sort of size babies, I suppose. Don't so... call them babies, Hux. <laughs> it's quite specific but all right <laughs> um he keeps his right hand under the counter um and goes how big's the crew five of us One of those points to uh, a reasonable sized harpoon. Um, and a uh, couple of lengths of that rope should do you. Sounds good. Could I have one of those? You'll, uh, want, go on. you'll, want, uh, you'll want two or three of you available at the time, not in charge of the ship. Gotcha. Could I get uh, one of those barbed spears as well, just in case? Uh, to give it a jab. Yeah. Um, we don't. Uh, we don't do tabs here. Presumably, one of us has brought actual money. <laughs> do we? Do you have actual money? Do we need to roll the resources? Actual yes. money. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to ask you to roll resources for this. It's company business, and I I'm happy that you could have spoken to. Uh, uh, but, 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 I forgot his name. Rupert Hawkins. No Hawkins, because oh, Rupert and Eleanor are not in at the moment. Um, course, yeah. I'm happy that you could have spoken to Hawkins, and uh, he'd have given you what you need. Cool. Okay, I will show the actual money then. <laughs> He um, moves his right hand back on top of the counter. <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Uh, please grab them. Um, assuming you grab them and bring them to the counter. Yeah, um, I'm kind of like, he's... how's this work? And yeah. Um, and he's writing for... stuff down on his sort of ledger in pencil, the values. And um... yeah, sorry, go on, John. You got anything for uh, buttering? Oh, when you uh, when you catch the thing, yeah. Any knives? Uh, on he the stick turns around. That? Yeah, he turns around, and behind the counter, there's some sort of serrated blades. Um, seven yards, you say? Yeah. That'll do you. 
good. Looks mean. In the right hands. Hux is trying not to show it, but he's a little bit excited about all this hardware. <laughs> <laughs> he's like hefting up the harpoon gun. It's like. <laughs> <clears throat> Anything else for you today? Nothing else other than, I suppose, any advice if it gets tricky? I'm going to lay a hand on Hux's shoulder and say, do you have anything for emergencies? Something loud. Something that maybe reputable customers don't come in asking for. Well, do you know someone who does? He, um, he takes out a pistol from below the counter um, and uncocks it, which Hux presumably is mildly confused about. Um, and sort to be of, fair, I'm not naive. I'm probably not that surprised. <laughs> um, and sort of uh, tucks it uh, into his trousers and walks out from behind the counter and locks the door uh, and says come on and sort of takes you through a curtain into the, the back um, I always wanted to see what was back here <laughs> and um then uh, sort of unlocks another door and um, takes you into um, an outside alleyway uh, and then takes you to a small building that's out like an outhouse out here, which he also unlocks and opens the door. And um, you see... Uh, I don't know if any of you would know immediately what it is, either of you, but they're basically sticks of dynamite. Um, and uh, he says, imported from America, these. Are we used for uh, mining and such, I believe. So, uh, yeah. They'll probably uh, help you in an emergency. I'm afraid uh, you may need to come back with a little more cash though. We'll take what we've got, thanks, and we'll uh, pop back soon. All right. He locks the door, takes you back in through the curtain. Unlocks the front door again. I will, when I pay for this stuff, make a point of slightly overpaying him and just nod to say, uh, best no one else knows we've been here. I uh, agree with that, yes. He's shown as dynamite. You're laughing at me, but he's not exactly an up above board sort of guy. <laughs> I just imagined someone trying to say, of all people, trust me, it was Hux. No, really, it was Hux. No, he was in it with someone else. <laughs> Honestly, he had money. Yes, real <laughs> yeah. money. Like, <laughs> oh, he's doomed already. You're right. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, I don't suppose there's any way of covering a harpoon gun with a paper bag. But, but now I think about it, we're walking out of a whaling <laughs> shop. It's fine to walk out with a harpoon gun. Yeah, it's London. Really it's Victorian bag. London. Everyone's feel, got a whaling gun these days. I feel like by the <laughs> point we get, up, I feel like by the point we get uptown, back to Rose House, then it starts to look awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we walk into the butchers, yeah, with a harpoon gun <laughs> and a spear, it's not a harpoon it gun. Weird. It's just a harpoon. You at least, yeah. at least, it distracts yeah. from the dynamite. You know, uh, harpoon guns <laughs> were true. harpoon guns were around. Well, like they were invented in the late 1700s. So I checked it out. It could be a harpoon gun. Well, I, I stand corrected, <laughs> John. You're carrying. He's carrying a harpoon gun. It's mounted <laughs> to God knows what. I'm just hauling it along. This is looking more and more like it could be the last episode. Of either <laughs> I, of I, 
I pictured just a harpoon, but if you want to have purchased a harpoon gun, you can have purchased a harpoon gun. Well, you say, I, I was thinking like one of those handheld, you know, the ones that's basically like a crossbow. Well, yeah, that, that, that's that's the harpoon gun. Yeah, exactly. Right, that's yeah. that's part okay. of the problem. The 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 small ones weren't invented until a lot later. Right. So the ones we have now are big chunky like, metal ones. Of like a Roman siege machine. Well, <laughs> because... they, they, you could carry them. They weren't like you know, but they weren't exactly handheld. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like when, the GM, when the GM allows you to have a harpoon gun, you know it's okay. not. It's going to be more harmful than helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really looking gun. forward to this. How often am I get a chance to have a harpoon gun in a roleplay? I'm sorry. Harpoon gun mean, and dynamite. Let's yeah. just be clear. I'll just all I'm gonna say is that the mechanism in a harpoon cannot jam. <laughs> it, we'll we'll say it's a harpoon. No. We ask for a no, beginner's I, kit. Don't, don't, don't back off. No. Don't back off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what, what the f I'm so disappointed. You ask for the beginner's kit, you get upsold. It's just how these things uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? It's true, it's true. You come in wanting a half yeah, and you leave yeah. with a... To be fair. Yeah, you, know, you can just get the beginner kit, but you're just going to get frustrated that you don't have all the bells and whistles. You know, you're going to get out there, you're going to throw your harpoon, you're going to wish time for you had the accuracy okay, of the harpoon I'll gun. I'll relent. We're walking back across town. It was stupid for me to have anything but just a harpoon. Harpoon, rope, and a fishing spear. That's what I mean. No, no. You, you've got the semi-automatic harpoon rifle. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> 30 harpoons a minute, that's what this thing's fine. Well, we, we have a hollow point harpoons. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, um, you have some form of harpooned system and uh, a sort of large fish butchering knife. Um, and this, uh, what else did you get? The spear? Uh, like a barbed spear as well, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I and will volunteer to yeah, wait cool. outside of the butcher's. Uh, with the kit while you go in. Um, you hear sort of... Uh, are, are you going to a butcher's shop or like a market stall? I'll go to a market stall. Yeah. So you've got the sort of buzz of the of the market, you know, people shouting deals at you and, um, and, and trying, to, trying to get your attention. Um, and you wander up to um this butcher's stall um and you you spot what you need and sort of get it bagged up and uh, purchase it and off you go um awesome. reasonably easy um and uh yeah are you then heading back to rose house yeah i think so okay and uh mosling uh is heading to chat to the captain um so round to his house, you had his address? Sure. Um, oh, uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. We're planning to see if we can't pin this thing down tonight um, in tonight. the sewers. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going give, to give him a kind of uh, address near an entrance point that we're going to. We're we could use some some assistance. Um, we're not quite sure what we're going to face, and it is going to be dangerous. So only volunteers. Uh, right. Can't promise no one's going to yeah. get hurt. Well, it's never safe out there on the sea. So all the Still. lads I work with are used to this kind of thing. Um, well, I'm glad one of us will be. Um, Plus, of course, you know, they they might not really be able to understand what's going on. So, uh, hmm. so then we might just be sailing in a tunnel. Um, well, the, f the first thing that would really help would be to move. Uh, there's a, a pig carcass uh that are this address oh, yeah. are the address that we we will need to we're going to be using as bait and that will need to get moved to that address that i've given you uh, well that's fine we people do yeah that. i can get a i can get a a cart um so we're fine yeah a cart i don't know why i didn't think of it um so yeah tonight, tonight let's say Seven, start preparing. 
fine. Uh, what, um, do you have any idea if there is a, some kind of size restriction on what kind of boat we'll need? Something, I, well, I, I'll, I'll describe the tunnels themselves. I don't know. So, from 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 what I know of the tunnels, is a is any boat going to be too big, or is like a small, um, like a small, you know, I don't know, row, not rowing boat, but a boat with oars like, able to navigate some of these none of some of these sewers? Is yes, you would called? be. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I'll describe that situation, and say, with the five of us. I, you know, you might not be able to fit more than five more onto the boat. I don't know how big right. your boats are. You know, a ten-man boat might be it. Fine. Uh, yeah, with that description, I can uh, I can find something appropriate. Fine. Um, see you at seven. Fantastic. Oh, I'll see you. Bef I'll I'll come back with you now, actually. And uh, yeah, he kind of. Um, he lives quite near the docks, so he says, I'll, I'll be back in a moment. And he comes back with a sort of push cart um, and a tarpaulin. Cool. Um, I want, can I do a vigilance check to see if uh, I'm being followed? Uh, sure, yeah. Or some kind of observation or whatever you want to call it. Vigilance. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be vigilance, yeah. Cool. I don't want this. I got two successes. I don't want this journalist catching a whiff of this because he always uh, he's already associates us with too much. Uh, yeah, you, there's nobody. Cool. You don't you don't notice anything. Then we'll um, head back. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he comes back and um, takes yeah. the. Yeah, and and heads Cars off. And heads off. Says, I'll see you there at seven. Seven. Uh, and everybody else, you know, over the next sort of few minutes, all return. Um, well, I, I I let all of you know that I've agreed to meet with the captain at seven, and that we're going to meet at this address. He's going to get a boat, and. Uh, some kind of plan so from from the layout johnny does it would it make more sense for us to bring like are we, are we, like are we kind of maybe like bringing the carcass on the boat and then luring the thing there or are we able to dump the carcass into the sewer from above and then kind of clamber down and then have the boat i'm not really sure what we're, i'm not sure what we're looking we're, you know what what the sensible option looks to mosling to be um you would be more in control of it if yeah. you because it's a sort of sluice thing it has a current yeah. so so if you had it with you you could ensure okay. that it went where you wanted it to go um obviously yeah. that increases your danger level but um yeah. so it's 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 weighing that up like do you want to be um yeah more in control and how how would this how, well, how how does the layout aim a does in terms of the ability to like close gates and maybe lock it in somewhere or something? Is there a way um, that we can? Yeah, so you you spotted a section, yeah, um, where you can definitely close two lots basically of barred gates that are between uh, some intersections. So there's no there's no way out past that, cool. um, and your you're pretty certain that based on its size as you saw it, because the, the bars will be sort of this distance apart. Yeah. So, so we might be able to do something like, potentially, like ha put go, go through this passageway with the boat and then close it on the end and then close it behind it. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, a plan is forming. I'm discussing the plan with the team. Does the team go, does the team look horrified or does the team look vaguely at ease with this plan team what health. what you know that you will need though is um like locks and chains to be 
for people to be um because they're sort of um dropping bars yeah. um so you'll be able to reach them but you'll almost need three sets of people because you'll need yeah the set in the boat and then you'll need two other sets that will either need to be sort of scrambling up the edges of the side of the tunnel or yeah. in another small boat each which you'd be able to get a rowing boat and kind of have those set up ready um yeah or or be scrambling then i let's say that i we agree now who those people are going to be but you guys can volunteer as you see fit to be one of those people who agreed to be in the teams i will one thing we ought... stay on the boat if possible can't I? Well, one thing we ought to consider is um i, I uh, we were doing the, the research we were doing about the hypnotism um not necessarily tied to the sea serpent so uh, take it with a pinch of salt but um it, it seems that that it may maybe that there's some sort of visual or auditory trigger for this hypnotism so there's obviously not much we can do about that visually um Ms. Bonneville had a very good idea about potentially whether looking at things through mirrors uh, so I may, may try blessing a mirror for whoever's on the, the main boat um although I, I think that'd be quite difficult um with the with the with the pig and um and trying to fight this thing but um in any case I think we ought to wear some sort of yeah, a bit a bit of getting, getting some wool and some hats to fashion a sort of contained it uh, sort of hat based earmuff situation <laughs> so now we can try and block out the noise as much as possible but it does mean that we'll be a bit more restricted in terms of being able to communicate and shout across to each other so we really ought to know where we're going what we're doing and if, if there may be some gestures or signals or something that we can we can give uh mr bonneville also had a very good idea about potentially some sort of other noise loud not loud bang sort of noise to trigger that hopefully snap somebody out of it if they if they do end up being hypnotized by this by this yeah. creature. Yeah, we did we did have an idea for a loud bang, didn't we? Be it's a uh, pretty loud, and yeah, potentially also pretty destructive. So maybe not to be used lightly. I was thinking of something a little smaller that would be less implicitly well, dangerous. Well, well, they came in like a roll of six. So maybe <laughs> you could do one of them. Um. Uh, Mr. Bonneville, you have a gun, do you not? Uh, B, you have a gun. That, that's a nice, loud, sharp noise without whatever this is. Um, a, a little less destructive, perhaps. We we might be able to use... Um, I've read that at sea, sometimes, that sailors can change the colour of the... can, can use different coloured lights to signal to one another. Maybe we could see if we could locate some uh, tor some torches or some candles or something that glows with different colours, and then we can use those to signal to one another if we are blocking our ears so we can't talk. Yeah, Maybe. we're going to have to have something to say, close the gate now, at least. Mm. And more importantly, I think possibly open it up again. We need to escape this danger. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Um, um, I, I, I don't know about like, uh, how... Is this an open area? Is it going to be dark? I think it it's to going to be, be quite dark. Waving flags or something. And quite dark contained. And so, so something that burns, <laughs> ideally. But hmm, someone on the on. Okay, so I, I, what I'm envisaging is if we can if we can locate some coloured burning material, like a candle or something, what? and we can have a top a lamp on the boat. And whoever's on the boat is in charge of signalling. And coordinating when why, things happen. Why not just have them hold three torches and light one, two, or three for different signals? Yeah, I, I just don't want to be fiddling around with a match. If it's, if it's dark, we are not going to be able to see this creature in order to harpoon it. We'll need light for that too. Do we? Do we need to trap it and come back in the morning? Do we need to light up the whole area anyway? And then Once we can there. just use flags or something. If we draw it in and we're in there with it, we can't get out without letting it out. So. <laughs> So, a couple of things. Um, firstly, um, boats can have lanterns on the front. Um, so, this captain seems pretty good. You would imagine that he's not going to think I'll go in there without that. Um, also, um, 
flares exist so you could have those as either signaling lighting or uh an emergency we need to leave sort of call um yeah, if you or have a flares, combination no, no, no. of those um yeah so there's let's a, do that there's a couple of things to bear in mind if we if i can get different colored flares then we can have a, a different colored flare for the gates and then everybody abort yeah so that um, sounds like me on the boat and you on the boat mosley force mark doing the flares because i'll stay to have the gun thing what are you thinking Johnny? um at, at the, the if you mention about flares i think uh b and hooks would remember that they had seen some in the whaling shop and then we're going back for away, away from <laughs> away from away from the tnt from the... <laughs> well we can get them on the way later on this evening yeah that sounds good um, still be okay good. if we can get like one color for each gate and one color for abandoned ship so three okay three colors that's what we need and then once we've closed both the gates it's 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 um time to wail on this thing how how does how does one open and close these things um, i think you lift them so if we have a couple of the sailors leap out with i think it may have to be one of you three uh to close the ones before and and after and uh, the ones who go I, you know, the ones who go in the first for the first gate i think obviously are going to be quite a treacherous situation yeah they're sort of chain pull and and the other way for dropping them we should um, we should check so the work before uh i think we should yeah work. i think we could like that, that, that'll be i uh, will head over there like at five or something and then start preparing then i think take some grease with us maybe some pig grease to you know ensure they run smoothly we could fill that entire little passage with <laughs> explosives and then <laughs> I thought you were going to say pig grease. Oh yeah, pig grease too. Pig grease and explosives. It's going to be the most delicious accident that's ever happened in London. Um, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. Oh well, perhaps not then. Um, uh, yeah, just not sure how effective I'm going to be pulling chains and. <sighs> to be honest, <laughs> Hux, I'd rather have you manage the second bunch of chains. And then from there, you're in perfect striking distance for this thing. Sure. And then I can have, if, if Constance, the thing is I'm most concerned about being on the boat is if this hypnotism gets me, uh, there's a better chance that it won't get both of us than my, that it will just affect one my, of us. My worry is if we've only got one boat or if we've only got one big boat and the others are little rowing boats, it, trying to fight it from anywhere but a big boat means you'll just get pulled in, which doesn't sound like a good idea. Yes, agreed. I think the main fight ought to happen from the main boat. That sounds of it. I don't feel like firing, <laughs> trying to throw the harpoon and then being roped in like a bunch I mean, of guys with me, ideally. I, I can be around for, for signaling or um, to keep watch on those fighting this thing, see if um, can, if anybody does seem to be taken under it. I don't know if that's at all helpful. Um, I just can't see myself wielding a harpoon or manning the gates that's quite all right well that sounds like b and bonneville have been volunteered manning the two gates then does it i say diplomatically i mean out of character it depends whether you want someone to succeed at a force role <laughs> there's really little chance that. of that happening for any of us so <laughs> true what i will say is that um you think that you're going to have more people so i I will have an arbitrary value for their force, which will probably be higher than yours. So it's what I will then do, but what I will then do is basically have you as an assist to that. So extra dice to the, to the pool. Um, so anyone assisting will just add an extra dice to that. Right. Pool. To be honest, the main reason that you're there is because you, you know, one of us will be able to manage the situation better, especially if they can't see Vassen. So it's less about lifting gates yeah. and more about coordinating sailors who have who will be in a situation they're not used to. And 
a situation where well, somebody just needs to be bossing them about, then I could do that if you want to be on the boat, Mr. Bonville. <laughs> I don't. I, I can certainly instruct I don't them to lift the gates. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, as long as my skills can be useful, that's uh, that's fine. But my skills are mostly uh, spotting things. I think. Um, can I just clarify? You book folks have said that it can be killed by biting its own tail. Do you read that the same sort of thing as that red cap? Like anything else we do to it? Won't touch it. Won't hurt it. I think we're going to have to find out. Uh, it's certainly yeah. a possibility. I mean, I think we've we've certainly learned that some of this information is imperfect. Look at the Spurtus intel that we got from that book. It's like, we can't always assume it's full or accurate information. We can only go with what we have at the moment. Perhaps it's just particularly agile vicious kind of creature and it's very difficult to get a hit on it unless you can trick it into biting its own tail and that's that's just what the you know the survivors managed to do um because bear knows? in mind once it's trapped it probably ain't going to be too interested in pig it's probably going to be more interested in escaping and killing things so i don't think we'll be able to trick it with pork i think we'll have to force its hand somehow or its vicious teeth I um i would like to spend some time blessing the harpoon for whoever then ends up wielding that. Ah, I think I can bless an item as well as a PC. Yeah, I'm um, sure. I, I will happily have you bless the harpoon and the spear if you're willing to. Yeah. So how's that one, work again? So Sorry, is it know. two extra dice on the roll for... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah let me know if the plan is, like, if, if we think harpoon or spear is more effective. I don't know if it's, like, I, I think and then spear, I think the yeah, harpoon is the number the one because it allows us to control yeah. it. Um, cool. So that's the one we really need to hit. So... I'll probably give the spear to someone else if I'm like harpoon. Holy harpoon yeah. coming up. Mm. You could have blessed the dynamite. Also, oh, <laughs> I'm trying to think, and now I'm metagaming with We're worst away from a holy hand grenade. Oh, it didn't matter. What are you thinking, Sam? Johnny, this is, pro I felt like this might be too meta but do I think throwing a harpoon is likely to be more of a force thing or an agility thing? <laughs> this is kind of asking about the game mechanics, I suppose. Depends if it's a harpoon or a harpoon gun. Because you use both, right? But to throw it accurately or to throw it at all, is it? I think... You cannot answer. That they're... Okay. <laughs> no, I think that there probably is a correct answer. Mm -hmm. Um... I think it's probably yeah it's kind of tricky what? i'm having a quick yeah. look in the book to see if there's, there's also ranged combat the equipment list yeah there is ranged combat to be fair isn't there yeah yeah that means um, good so i think yeah. it would probably be that okay well in that case i would not wield the harpoon <laughs> definitely not I will give the harpoon to B <laughs> to wield. And I will take the spear, which is much more like my thing. I'm trying to... So I can't find a thing on throwing weapons, but explosives are under ranged combat. Yeah, it sounds like that makes sense then, doesn't it? Go for it. Cool. Okay, I'll have the spear. I'll change my weapon to spear. And the harpoon has been blessed, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Ranged weapons in the book includes spear, bow, longbow, crossbow, pistol, or revolver, musket, rifle, and cannon. Is it more None similar a to a cannon? Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's nothing really similar in the melee weapons list. Chair but is under the melee weapons list. Yeah. Interestingly enough. Like spears and guns are both in there, so I think the the harpoon yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the same thing. Gotcha, cool. Oh yeah, spear kind of implies throwing for a ranged weapon. Then got it. Okay, yeah, I'll have the fishing spear and take the poke then. So given I'm not on the boat, I'm happy to be on one of the gates if we want me to be. Okay. Probably the first one, the one we need to close once it goes in. If I have a choice of two, that seems to be so. Mosling done. Quick. Mosling and B. On the boat. 
Uh, I guess Bonneville could be as well. First gate. Wait, wait a minute. I'll have a crack with Bonneville. Bonneville, mm. you're you're better. You're more like spotted than me. You know what you're looking for. Do you want to go at the first gate? Make sure it's closed in. If that's the way it's going to be coming in. Sure. Because I suppose the exit gate, you only need to wait for the boat to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And unless yeah, those sure. keen eyes are more helpful on the boat, uh, are we likely to miss this this large creature coming in through the gates? Well, I mean, I can I can signal as soon as it's, as it's through the uh, the first gate, um, if that would uh, if that fits with the plan. Then again, maybe I should be on the boat. I've just reconsidered it again because once we've harpooned it, what are we doing? Someone needs to hold the rope. We'll tie the rope to the boat. Yeah, but I suppose. We need to maneuver it though, don't we? Control where it's going. I guess we row it around. We do. It's also well, if we're planning on the boat being outside the gate and the serpent being inside the gate, then we can't really spear it very well, can we? This is I mean, the, the bar you can we can reach through the bars, right? We can the bars are the you know, they're not like huge, they're just we can step through the bars. Yeah, all right. Well, then butch them yeah, you think you think you could probably squeeze through if you if you needed to. We just break Wait, did you guns. say that? I, I'm not fitting through those bars. We could bring guns, we can bring cannon, we can bring <laughs> <laughs> Well uh, we'll grease you up with the pig fat before we try Hux. Look, I'll tell you what. We've chatted about this loads. Let's just get down there. We said we want to go early. Have a look. See what we think. This is going to go um, wrong actually, so quickly. So with, with this, this, hang on, there's two gates. Like, Do we actually need someone manning both, or do we need to close the far one first? Well, if we don't so, close do the we... first one, then it will... I suppose we could and close you... both gates at the same time. But I mean, so if it... I'm sorry, maybe we're pitching this wrong. If you picture kind of a... Like there's the main river or whatever, and then it essentially comes into something like a tunnel. Effectively, we've got these gates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then, if the if we've got like if the river's over this side, and this is first mm -hmm. gate, and this is second gate, mm -hmm. then if the second gate is already closed. If it comes through here, we don't need to close it only once it's come through. We can just have it closed beforehand, and if we're trying to lure it in oh. here, and then we close the first gate, right? The boat needs to pass through. So I, I maybe I'm. Was, oh, so, oh right, so it's, the boat's coming through that second one. That's what That's I assumed okay, right. was the plan. Yeah, that was go. my plan. Yeah, but okay. I do, I do think people. Will, there is some debate about whether we should be trapped in there. With that there thing. is some debate. I, I, yeah, I was wondering if we'd just be trapped in there yeah. wrangling it. I, I thought, yeah, I thought we were being trapping ourselves in there to then harpoon the thing. So I got slightly the wrong. Answer. If so, you okay. only need one gate closing. <laughs> it's, it's a simpler plan. Well, this is what I was Let, Let's go <laughs> also, have a look. It has the but yeah, let's definitely do that. It also has the bonus that we can escape from the bars if we are able to get away from the thing. But if we're not able to get away from the thing, then we can't escape through the bars. Um, okay, are you getting like a rowing boat and heading in here with sort of lanterns? Yeah, I mean, I mean like, how, how, like, how, are there like, how navigable without a boat are these tunnels? Are they innavigable or? It wouldn't be impossible, but it would be hard work because you'd be, right. they're sort of cir circular tunnels. Um, and there aren't walkways. So okay. you That's could cool. be up on the edges, but you'd be sort of on an angle all yeah. the time and you might slip yeah. a little. You're not going to die, but like you might end up with sewer yeah, water. Let's, let's get like a little cool. coracle and, and yeah. go down to it at a time or something and scout it out. Okay. Um, so whoever is heading in, um, presumably Mosling and somebody else because you know you've seen the maps. Um, so who else wants to head down at least in the first place? I mean, if, if, well, yeah, I'd like to sort of get a lie of the land, figure out like if there are safe spots where, you know, where, where are the safe spots where people can hide yeah. that sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know, do the whole sort of, uh, alien. Does, does the of, thing work? That's an yes. idea. Yes. Can we okay. shut all the doors? So you head in, um, and uh, Mosling, you would know that you have to take basically the second right-hand intersection, uh, and then left, and then this is basically the area where um, the two gates are. 
so they're currently down, which you would presume is standard because they're there for whatever to stop whatever from going through. Um, you see the sort of pulley mechanism mm -hmm. um, at the edges. Are you going to give that? Again? Yeah, we'll sort of, um, out. So the, the only places where the uh, the tunnels are not essentially circular is there is a sort of flat outcropping under these areas. So there's somewhere yeah. steady to stand while you. Um, so this is not. Uh, it's not like rusted in place, but equally you don't think it's been done like yesterday. So it takes a bit of a bit of mm. effort, um, but you do manage to sort of start the thing moving do you want to check it'll go the whole height that you need it to go i do i imagine i might we might have also bought some brought brought some grease with us to help like yeah. grease this thing if 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 needs be it doesn't need to be ma made from rendered pig fat but it might be i'm not saying it's not yeah. it's just yeah sure um yeah so a little bit of you know effort um definitely i i would say that if one of you is trying to do it at first, the other one joins in because for one person, yeah. it, it would be hard work and slow as well, which is obviously not what you want. Um, and, Once it's uh, up, if you just let go of the chain, does it just drop like a stone or? Uh, it does. So there is like, um, you know, there's a sort of hook thing for you to wrap the chain around essentially if it needs to stay up. Um sure. Which doesn't look like it's ever been used, because well, let's it, let's well let's leave it with them both up to not, like for let's leave it, leave it with them both up for now. Like when we when we leave okay. eventually this evening, we will have it both up. Sure. Um, so yeah, is there anything else that you want to scope out while you're down there? Like um, whether we can, I want to know whether we can fit through the bars. Like whether that, whether my idea was correct, and so I tried to pass through the bars when they're closed. Yes, you can. Yeah, cool. Um, it's 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 a little squeeze. Um, but you know, you get your head and your arm through, so everything else can pass through afterwards. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine in an emergency. You know, no extra, extra stress or danger. And and what would our exit? Well, our, our fastest, like, so, also, so where we entered, did we enter, like, from the river and then up, yeah. or did we kind of, okay, cool. And uh, there's no, like, manhole-style exits and entrances that you can do that take you onto the street level? Mm, not, uh, you think you would be quicker to go, um, like, if you pass through the second gate... Um, you think you would be quicker to take, there's basically like an immediate left intersection, which takes you back onto the main thing, and mm -hmm. then you can go back out. Cool. Good to know. Right, there we go. So you'd be it's fighting fine. a slight current, but you would have probably 10 people rowing a boat, so you think you'd probably be okay. Yeah. Um, this all looks perfect, doesn't it, Bonneville? <laughs> well, I hope so. Um he says so, with one lantern in a dark <laughs> sewer tunnel. <laughs> so this this thing, we want this thing to go through an open gate and then we shut the gate. So have I had identified somewhere safe to stand such that... For the, doing the... Well, no, no, for before, before, like as as the creature goes past... I think yep. you'll have to step off onto this, pla this like platform where you pull the chain from and... Flatten yourself against the wall. I hope it doesn't pay attention to you. So I say that in a more diplomatic the, way. You're out of the water. Um, and but, yeah. But if if this serpent decided to take a different path, say, or you know, picked up the whiff of uh, of delicious bacon sandwiches, what's what's stopping it? Perhaps nothing from. Um, you know, is there anything we can put between us um, to to lower the chances of getting eaten as the creature makes its way into the trap? Um, or, is it, or is it just all, like, hope it doesn't notice us? All you could really do, um, honestly, is like, climb the chain. Um, the chain that's just it, been greased. It, 
it's it's a cylinder base this tunnel and there's a little bit that's out there that's like a little out flat out cropping that then goes down and meets back up with the the cylinder um that's there specifically for doing this thing um so it's slightly out of the water okay but yeah it, but you know it's a sea serpent so its senses are going to be for for detecting things in the water not yeah out yeah. of the water and th and there's going to be a a food stuff that as far as you are aware is its favorite thing in the world that it's going to be following yeah. you haven't you put bacon sandwiches today have you put it on. <laughs> <laughs> i might yeah i might um, mm. i know I'm they not say here, that but... humans taste a lot like pig I know I'm not here, but it's probably helpful to visualize anyway. Is the platform for the chain on the inside or the outside of the gate from where? Oh, the so the, the outside. Okay, so it just has sides. to go by, and once the gate's closed, you should be on the safe side. Got it. Yes, yeah. Unless you're on the second gate. <laughs> no, if you're on the second no, that's gate. No, that's side. also on the outside, yeah. Because, because what you would need... Because this is designed to be opened and closed. So... You wouldn't be able to open just the one at the other side without yeah. opening this one if it wasn't on the outside of the gate. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, cool. I think we have a plan. We do our preparation. The ho it, make, it sounds like it makes sense. And yeah, <laughs> time to count down the hours. So I'm also happy to say that everybody else could have been down in, you know, I have as much so of a look as anybody, they want to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if anybody had any other questions or anything, then I, I guess the question yeah. inevitably we're all thinking of now is so assuming we trap it, we close the first gate, sail the boat out, close the second gate, it's in there. What are we doing then? I I think we can close the second gate. Oh unless do, do we do we think the boat is going to pass in past second gate? And, well, that's, and that's what we need to close. Do we think we realistically do. we can fight? But do we think we can fight this thing without being in with it? Like, can we per fight it through bars? If possible, and this might be a really highly complicated, feel free to shoot this down, this idea. But maybe if we could leave the pig in with it, and it's thrashing around, trying to eat a pig, maybe we stab its tail a bit. Like maybe it gets confused and bites itself. I don't. I know it's a long shot. Otherwise, it's keep well throwing the harpoon. That's well, I feel issue. like looking at that space in there. If it's inside and we're outside, we're going to be twenty feet away from it at the very least. I don't think we've got much hope of firing through those bars and getting any useful. I don't know. Maybe maybe we will, but certainly it's not it's getting the bite. Between the danger and the effectiveness, isn't it really? I don't much like the idea of anybody being trapped in there, but certainly if anybody is going to be in there, they ought to be on the boat. I think. Yeah. I've had an idea for trying to trick it. Well, I was trying to think of how to use the offal, right? And my idea before was maybe you could get the boat close and you just dump it over the side and hope you get it on its tail. Do we think it would be possible to hang the bag of offal from the ceiling. And then maybe when it's underneath it, either me or Bonneville could shoot it and it'll fall on it and it go. You could put some, uh, some like fishing hooks on the, uh, on the outside of the bag, drop the bag onto its tail. That might, uh, that might secure it. Or if you manage to get a load of stuff attached to the harpoon itself, get the harpoon in the tail, it thinks something's going for its tail, yeah. whatever this creature is. Something pig-like is going for its tail. Tries to bite I think, it. I bite think its harpooning tail. the tail and seeing if it bites its own tail is the best. Is a good yeah, option. attach something to it as well, the harpoon, so it thinks there's something to bite there. But Keep tugging on it. From, from having seen that space, Johnny, do we think it would be doable to harpoon through the bars? It's not like, you know, you'd have to be like, if you can pass away. through the bars, then you can harpoon through them. Yeah. Okay. And also, you this thing is not like again. you'll be your guy, Johnny. Um, even if you were concerned about the width of the harpoon, which you might be, if you didn't take it down, you'd be like, maybe I'm not sure. But you could certainly sort of sideways through the bars, 
you know, and, and then it would be doable. So you could stand on one of them platforms, stable place to do it from. So most of us go through with the boat, B jumps off, shoots it. I'll stand there with a spear, maybe. The rest of you keep going, I suppose, and then just stay back a bit. Bonneville's at the front, keep an eye out. Does that sound good? Maybe with a couple of sailors or some of us. Yeah, all right. When's this captain mm -hmm. turning up then? So um, I'll pop up and get some flares before then. I'll be back in a minute. Flares, maybe more harpoons. And uh, the other. I thought we decided against that bit. <laughs> I'll if it's an emergency. Does it have do a... Can you get a receipt with this other thing? Do I have any concept for how big an explosion... I probably don't do I, Johnny. Not at all. <laughs> I'm just thinking, do I have any concept of having explosives? With explosives, I always think, you know... Add ten percent. Mm. More is for safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the. Uh, assuming I can acquire enough money, I will also buy uh, the dynamite. I'm, I'm happy to donate because I think you can spend resource, can't you? I'm happy to spend my resource on this. Depends if we need to. I don't know Johnny's rules for buying stuff for the. I definitely have um, no money myself. I'm again gonna put this on the the company tab, so you're fine. Um, oh, so, I want to see the expense return for this. <laughs> so you have a plan. I think okay. we do. <laughs> then uh, let's call it for this week. And uh, next week you can enact that plan. Oh, We're going to start in media res. We're going to just think of someone shouting, The gate won't close! The <laughs> gate won't close! Just have a view outside the sewer. There's a, a, an almighty bang, and then just awful, a lot of awful. <laughs> <laughs> just, really, you may be wondering how smell. I got here. <laughs> uh, perfect. It's um, just pucks floating in the water, just like on a pig. <laughs> oh, I I have an additional piece of secret prep that I would like to do. Would you like me Ooh. to save it for next time? Yeah. Is it writing oh, wow. a will? I assume I've already done that. Do you want to message me out of that thing? Yeah. And we can... yeah. Um, cool. Let's do... Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Um, thank you, uh, you five, for playing. Let's do XP points. Um, one for participating in the session. Uh, you did not confront any Vess in this session. You didn't identify a previously unknown Vesson. You were not affected by your dark secret, anybody... Um, I don't think anybody took any risks to protect other people. Um, you have learned some things. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that one. You didn't develop anything. You didn't perform an extraordinary action, so 2 XP. Mm -hmm. Does that put anybody over the 5 for another thing? Just hit 5 again. Finger is a yes. Now I've got. I've only got one more slot for a talent, so I'm like, oh... Should I should I use that slot soon or should I save up? How's everyone else doing? You must have a few talents by now. I've used up my talent slots. You've used now. them all, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it limited to the number of slots? Is that a thing? Well, where do you put the next one? You write smaller. Don't maybe. Know. I don't. It, it might. I don't know. It might be limited to. <laughs> I just assume that more than five. I will is check silly. that because I don't. I don't know. I can level so, up so quickly. Like... Yeah, you do. I I can I think we should slow down the leveling to be honest if we keep playing. Well, so, I mean, if, if everybody dies, the next level ever will be a problem. <laughs> yeah. No but, I, mean, XP, so. I only restricted it to five partly. I think it's a sensible part of the character sheet because you have, they all give you extra little rules to think about. So if you had like fifteen of them, you'd lose track. So. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm currently on four. So. Mm. I've got three. Yeah, I've got four now. None of them is, is, you know, escaping ill-defined sea serpents. Um, well, I've just got tough as nails in the last, uh, just before this one, so if I fancy, you know, challenging it to a pugilist's fight, then we'll see. I, think it's a I can't death. think you can punch a serpent to death, Hux. I, totally <laughs> I will watch that wrestling too. match, for I'll, sure. I'll see yeah. with my AEW, 10 dice, we'll, we'll we have to see. <laughs> Hux versus the serpent. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I can't see that it says it's limited, um, but I'll double check that. Um, cool. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat. Um, below the video are links to our YouTube, Twitch, social media, Discord. Please come join that and chat with us and our uh, Patreon. Um, John, are there any thanks that we need to do? Yeah, there is a uh, thanks for the subscribe from Lyramian, who actually subbed uh, during Simbroom last week, but we you. Uh, missed you off, I'm afraid. Uh, but a more recent thank you to Zen and Gzibi. And I am so sorry for how I pronounced I mean, both or either of those names. Um, it sounds to me, John, they were asking for it. I mean, what? Is that X's and Z's, Z's and uh... It's S's and Z's. Okay, yeah, that sounds confusing. <laughs> but it's uh, it it might just be because I'm an Anglophone and <laughs> therefore terrible at pronouncing things. Um, yes, thank you. Um, are there any questions or comments? <laughs> I just like this one, and I don't know why. We're going to have so much pig left over after this. New rule, I every mean, time you pass butchers, you've got to pick up some more bacon. You could you could let the sea serpent have a last meal before you send it off to just, its water. Just feed it, feed it pig until it bursts. I mean, that's... You know, <laughs> yeah. that could work. If we just make the sea serpent really happy, it'll just go away, right? Maybe. I like the idea that we're all buying all of this pig from the same guy as well. We so we're all going to the market and go. That butcher looks like he's mm. he's got the amount of pig we need. And Every butcher in London will have the amount of pig we need. He's he's now massively upped his pig order because he thinks this is like a recurring right. thing. Yeah, he's yeah. Now going to end up out of pocket quite badly. He'll, he'll see us passing by the week next week and be like, "Oh yeah, I've got I've got some more." And we're like. <laughs> <laughs> Not bothered, mate. Yeah. Well, you know, per oh, perhaps you. you know, perhaps we can we can generate perhaps every solution to every vase and problem we have <laughs> from this point on is is Solve pig related. Pig. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. You think we should just I mean, the fairy a bacon sandwich? Solution is, well, and Constance's solution is like bless everything. The the <laughs> the the cross will solve every problem. Someone else can pick bacon as the solution to every problem. Why not? You should have yeah. tried blessing the pig. Yeah, oh, exactly. Like yeah. Poisoning. Yeah. I shouldn't fun. have blessed that bloody harpoon, should I? I should have blessed the thing. <laughs> I love that idea. Which leads into the next comment. <laughs> yeah. That was think... that was mooted as an idea, yeah. I don't think blessing, blessing the pig would be very kosher. <laughs> Didn't no. that no. blessing the tennis conversation just move into bless the whole country? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it did. How long, how long does it take? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that is everything for today i think cool um all right thanks everybody uh we should be back next week for uh the execution of the plan um i'm very excited which i think means execution of the plan I, i'm Surely. just really glad that yes. we managed to come up with a plan and, and like like we like you know there's a lot there's a lot of you know like, i'm not oh, sure we did manage to we'll come see. up with a plan <laughs> I, I feel think. like a plan was right. devised, and about That'd half right. of it was Johnny being nice and feeding us the plan in a way that made it seem like it was our idea. It's true. No, I don't think that's true. Okay. I don't, I don't feel like I did that. It's whatever, whatever we can agree. Justin not asked if it was plan. Justin asked if it was possible to trap the thing in there. Mm, true, that's true. true. Yeah. I there feel like it's still one of those like step step one step you know step one trap thing oh, yeah, step two to, harpoon it like like that's just the, a thing we can just if, do. If I'd said I'm going to use the guillotine in the sewers to chop its head off, and <laughs> because my research says there's a guillotine there, <laughs> then that would have you know you've got to work within the confines of what Johnny's willing to believe as in a Victorian sewer. How fast are those gates, Lambda? Maybe we can guillotine that, this that thing. That was one of my first thoughts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh um, God! I think my my main concern is is in terms of plan. It's kind of like uh, step one, uh, catch a bear. Catch the step, step, step two, two, you now have a bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's literally the dogs that caught the car. Like, step two, yeah. deal with the problem you've now created. <laughs> but I think that then, then you know solution.
gunpowder. Like it's just yeah. it's very straightforward. In a answer. confined space, it'll be fine. There'll be no, mm. you know. Um I mean <laughs> Fasten is supposed yeah. to be like, you know, if it's if it's it won't die without eating its own tail. But if it's in pieces, surely it's not gonna be in a good state. <laughs> True. I guess we'll find out. Unless it's like a full body Hydra and we I cut it in half. Yeah, we have, yeah. we have nearly nothing to lose. <laughs> Except so if, we, lives, if we catch it and, and it reputation. doesn't work, we just we just get in the boat and leave. You, know? yeah, you, have, yeah. you have everything to lose and nothing to gain. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm, I'm um, sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we'll be back next Monday. On Wednesday, there is Simba Room. And uh, next Thursday is the beginning of the final arc of the Cincinnati Chronicles. The rest of it is on YouTube if you want to go back and watch that, if you haven't seen it. Um, all very exciting things. So, um, And please do come join us on Discord and chat with us. Um, and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>